Erica Mary Murphy, and Garrett Nicholas Cooper will state publicly their choice to spend the rest of their lives loving one another by choosing one another as husband and wife. What we have today is a joining of hearts, of minds, of shared values and dreams that when blended with love and intention makes all things possible. The coming together of two people does not mean that one ceases to be an individual. Love does not ask you to become small so that your partner may grow. Love asks one thing of you and that is to always remain true to who you are. True love always seeks authenticity so that love may be honest and complete because this is what love is. Love is not breathlessness, it is not excitement, it is not the promulgation of eternal passion. That is just being in love, which any fool can do. Love itself is what's left over when being in love has burned away, and this is both an art and a fortunate accident. Those that truly love one another have roots that grow towards each other underground. And when all the pretty blossoms have fallen from their branches, they come to find that they are one tree and not two. Marriage offers us the opportunity for growth, for full self-expression, for lifting your lives to their highest potential. You're each on a journey with the one you love as an equal partner, sharing equally both the authority and the responsibilities inherent in every partnership, bearing equally what burdens there be, and basking equally in the glories. Security in life comes with knowing that everything one needs in life, love, wisdom, kindness, compassion, already resides within you, and that you do not come together in the hopes of taking these gifts, but in the hopes of giving them, that your beloved might have them in greater abundance. Be gentle with one another. Be quick to forgive and slow to anger. Honor one another, trust one another, love one another with a kind and gentle love. Do not lose your sense of self, but make room to celebrate who you are and who you will become together. A happy marriage is much like a beautiful dance. It is holding each other close and moving to the same music. Garrett, focus your intention on being the best husband, Erica, the best wife, the best friend that you can be to one another. Forgiveness is a key to happiness. Marriage, like baseball, is the ultimate team sport. There are fundamental rules to the game, but an infinite number of ways to play the game. No two marriages, like no two games, will be the same. But there are things that you can do to create a successful marriage. Baseball, as you know, is played as a team. And although individual performance is important, no one wins a game alone. The same is true about marriage. It's having a teammate in life and having someone to cheer on. It's having someone who is always on your side, no matter what. It's loving someone so much that you're always on their side. Through the twists and the turns, it's having someone right beside you. To roll with the punches with you, to nod when you look over and say, I didn't see this one coming. To walk through the good and the bad with you, through the mundane and unexpected with you, through the good decisions you make and the terrible choices you make. It's never being alone, even when you are. It's compromise, patience, loyalty, and passion all wrapped up into one. First, I'd like to thank everyone for coming. East Coast, West Coast, thank you. It's a long trip. I know about that. And I want to welcome you to this joyous celebration of Erica and Garrett. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Erica's dad. Erica is my youngest daughter of three. When I tell people I have three daughters, I always get a look of shock. <laughs> and I either get a God bless you or I'm, a, I'm sorry. <laughs> But I have to say, as you can tell, I've been truly blessed with three girls. They make my life complete. Erica, you look absolutely stunning tonight. But you know me, 
I think you look beautiful with your hair pulled back, no makeup, cleats on, running up and down the soccer field. Tonight, I'd like to make two toasts. My father, Erica's grandfather, passed away a few months ago. He never missed any important events for the girls. Erica, I know Grandpa's looking down at you today, smiling above, and I know he's just as proud of you as I am today. Cheers to my dad. He always loved a good drink, and I'm sure he's looking down. <laughs> Garrett, I gotta hand it to you. You really kept me on my toes today. I didn't think I'd be able to say this, but well done. You managed to walk down the aisle without getting injured. <laughs> Scott, where are you? Take note, right? <laughs> for the brother who's looking for West Coast, you know, I will supplement the salary to keep him East Coast. Okay, so Scott, you hear that? We'll, we'll throw something in there. Keep him East Coast. When Erica first told me about Garrett, I was skeptical. Now, parents in the room, picture your youngest daughter telling you that your daughter is dating a Major League Baseball player and he's playing for the Yankees. Now, I'm a guy from Brooklyn, born and raised. I love the Yankees. I've had season tickets for years to the Yankees, right behind home plate. But I'll be honest, when Erica told me she's dating a Yankee, I wasn't happy. Not at all. My first thoughts were, this is not gonna end well. <laughs> Erica's sister and I thought the same thing. Look out, this is gonna be nothing but trouble. <laughs> but Garrett, I have to admit, you exceeded my expectations, and welcome to the family. <laughs> Erica, as I walked you down the aisle today, I thought about our years together. Daddy, daughter, dances. Lake George Summers with the family, ODP National Championship goals, <laughs> Penn State Big Ten semifinal goal, and the thousands of miles we logged together in the car traveling across country just to play soccer. They're some of the greatest memories of my life. and I'll never forget it. You've always been strong, independent, hardworking, never afraid to challenge yourself, and you never took shit from anyone. <laughs> I remember when Erica had an argument with her college coach, and I see some of the players here tonight, <laughs> and she told her to stick a scholarship up her ass. <laughs> she was really upset. She calls me up crying to me. She says, you know what, Dad? Most people say, I wish I did this, I wish I did that, but I always say, I can't believe I fucking did that. <laughs> Garrett? Keep that in mind when you don't take the trash out. <laughs> At this time, I'd like to toast to the beautiful couple. Erica and Garrett, you know what it takes to play at the highest level of athletics. The hard work, the commitment, the inevitable challenges, the grind of playing every day in and out, even when you don't feel well or 100%. There are days in marriage will feel like an uphill battle. Always remember that you're on the same team, Know that when you fight to win an argument, you're fighting against your own team. The end result will be a loss. Stay committed to each other, support each other, communicate, work together. This is how you'll win the game of life. Erica and Garrett, I wish you health, happiness, a future filled with love and success. And Erica, always know, no matter how old you are, what your last name is, you'll always be my little girl. Thank you.
When Erica asked us to be her maids of honor, we thought that writing the speech would be the most stressful part. But we have to say, helping to plan a wedding in the middle of a pandemic takes the cake. Get it? The wedding cake? <laughs> How beautiful was that ceremony today, guys? And standing up there, we kept hearing you guys say things like, how stunning, gorgeous, beautiful. To that, Maddie and I would like to say, thank you. We know that our bodies are rocking, but please remember today is about Erica. <laughs> we came from a family of three girls, Erica being the baby. So safe to say puberty was a great time for our dad. <laughs> he never did get a boy, but we like to say he got the next best thing, Erica. <laughs> Over the years, we've watched Erica grow from a competitive tomboy to a now competitive Real Housewife of Miami. And we have to say, through all the phases, we've never seen her happier than she is now with Garrett. We can still remember her coming home to tell us how she finally felt like she met her person. We couldn't be more happy to finally call you a brother, Garrett. And thank you for treating our sister like the queen she is. So, as your slightly older and much wiser sisters, here are a few tokens of wisdom we've learned along the way. Beauty fades, but so will your eyesight. So there's no sense in worrying. <laughs> Don't forget your two essentials, a sense of humor and selective hearing. She's always right, and you should have just done it the way she told you to the first time. Marriage is an as-is deal that lasts forever. Look at each other. That's as good as it gets. <laughs> And Garrett, never laugh at your wife's choices because you're one of them. <laughs> Erica, marriage is all about give and take. Give him something to eat and go take some time for yourself. And never go to bed angry. Stay up and fight all night. That always worked for our parents. <laughs> Lastly, if one of you turn up missing, the police always investigate the spouse first. That tells you all you really need to know about marriage. <laughs> and in all seriousness, we couldn't be more happy for our baby sister and our new brother, especially since it comes with a Miami vacation place. <laughs> We're so excited to watch you build your future and family and fight over who is the best auntie. It's me. <laughs> we come from one of the most functionally dysfunctional families that you'll find. We fight hard, we laugh hard, we love hard. There's nothing one of us wouldn't do for the other, and we welcome you to the inner circle, Garrett. Erica and Garrett, may you wake up every day and choose each other. Always treat each other with respect. Never stop being friends. And remember, marriage is like a fine wine. It only gets better with age. Erica, wow, uh, we finally made it. The first moment I saw you, I replied to your Instagram DM. However, the moment I met you, I immediately felt something different. Knew you were the one for me. I still get that same feeling every day when I look at you. It's a feeling of unconditional love, happiness, and loyalty. I am so grateful for your never-ending support, whether it was you cheering me on as you sat through another 17-inning game in the middle of summer or sitting in the emergency room for another surgery to repair some muscle or tendon I hurt, <laughs> or just pushing me to be the best person I can be. You stood by my side through spurts of depression, anxiety, and anger. You never left me. I promise to always be your biggest fan and your partner in crime. I promise to love you, encourage you, trust you, and respect you. I vow to create a, and support a family with you and a household filled with laughter, patience, understanding, and love. I vow not just to grow old together, but to grow together. I vow to love you through the difficult and the easy. Today, I choose you to be my wife. I accept you as you are, and I offer myself in return. I will care for you, stand beside you, and share with you all the days of my life. As I have given you my hand to hold, so I give you my life to keep. I love you. We're here. We made it. 
If you would have told me five years ago that one baseball game would change my life, I would have never believed you. It would be impossible to explain all my love for you in this short amount of time, but I'll try. You are kind. You are witty. You are intelligent. You are selfless. I love the way you love everyone around you, especially your family. Your smile is contagious, and you can put away an entire pizza in one sitting like no one else can. I can sit here and tell you how much I love you, but those words mean nothing unless they are shown through action. I vow to respect you, trust you, and value your opinions. I vow to help shoulder our challenges and celebrate all of our wins. I vow to walk with you through this life as your biggest fan. I vow to be patient in your honest mistakes, even when you don't take the trash out, although I've asked you every night for the past week. <laughs> I vow to support you and motivate you. I vow to love you unconditionally. I vow to be the best mother, and I know you're going to be an incredible dad. I vow to be your partner and to never stop being your best friend. And last but not least, and I think you'll like this one the best, I vow as your wife, I will never keep score. Even though I'm totally winning and everything is always a competition. <laughs> you have taught me how to love and most importantly how to be loved. Falling for you wasn't falling at all. It was walking into a house and knowing you're home. You've been by my side through all these years. Together as my best friend, boyfriend, fiance, and now husband. No matter where life takes us, I will choose you every time and a million times over again. I love you. Honestly, can't think of a more fittingly beautiful place for the most beautiful girl to have her wedding. And thank you to everyone for being part of the evening. Now on to Garrett and Erica, or G and E, as we like to refer to them. We'll start with Garrett. To take it from the top, G arrived on the scene on Christmas Day in 1990. I guess he had to start with the grand entrance. He was a surprise to my parents, who were both in their 40s. Our baby brother, the youngest of seven children. Four older brothers and two older sisters was immediately everyone's favorite. He was an abnormally large baby with an even larger head that fortunately he's grown into recently. He had a friendly and happy demeanor and an enormous appetite. A few things about Garrett became apparent as he grew into a little guy. He was very smart and inquisitive, wanting to learn how to do things. He was very athletic and relentlessly competitive. With four older brothers, he was the perfect running back for some family room football. Sorry about that, Mom. By eight or nine, he was holding his own, playing every sport with his older brothers, and outpacing nearly every kid his age in the area. Now, despite being a rather chunky kid, he did maintain a candy drawer next to his bed, which was fantastic. <laughs> And he had flat feet, too. Nonetheless, he was a dominant basketball player. But as I mentioned before, he was also very smart and realized that a four-inch vertical wasn't going to get him to the NBA. <laughs> My parents, as we all do, adore G. He's definitely their favorite. My dad spent countless hours taking Garrett all over Southern California and beyond to play in sporting events. My dad ran the local Little League and Pony League and always seemed to know that G had a future in the sport. I don't know that he expected that he'd be in the MLB, but I think he expected he'd to go pretty far. My mom made sure that he was always ready to perform, keeping him well-fed and focused on academics as well. And of course, making sure that he and all of us went to church every Sunday. As for his siblings, the roles have now reversed. While G used to follow us around like a little appendage, it's now all of his siblings who are traveling around the country and following him around. As a guy who really doesn't like small talk, I'd personally like to thank G for giving me a great talking point when I'm in groups and making me look cooler and maybe even more athletic than I really am. In Garrett's choice of profession, unpredictability and stress pervade one's existence. Despite the setbacks, and for the records, none of the injuries were his fault, that relentless drive has shown through, and we are so very proud of him for all of his achievements. Which brings us to his greatest achievement, Erica. O.E., what can I say? To start, thank you for being G's rock. 
And as an aside, his brother's confidential informant. Gee, unfortunately, you've married a double agent. <laughs> you are intelligent, driven, caring, impressive, and of course, beautiful. Garrett is beyond fortunate to have found you. Though I know there is still some debate as to who reached out to whom on Instagram. I guess only the Instagram gods will know. As one rapper once said, it does go down in the DMs. <laughs> it is only fitting that we first met you at my wedding. My family adores you, and my wife adores you even more. You are the perfect compliments to each other. I mean, who else enjoys three hours of working out every day, seven days a week, followed by a tasteless, high-protein, low-carb meal? I don't know a G without an E anymore, and that is how it was meant to be. My siblings and I are so happy to welcome you as our sister, Erica, and my parents welcome you as their daughter. All we can hope, and I apologize to the Murphy clan for this, is that someday you two incredible people will head back out west. So Dodgers, Padres, where's Scott? Dodger. Scott, we need you to earn your money here. We need to get you back out west. No Giants. So with that, I would ask that everyone raise their glass for one kind of a couple. G and E, one of a kind couple. To G and E, we wish you the best today and always. We love you with all of our hearts. I found you